We're going to start with, I'll get the right, there we go. We're going to start with the linear equation. So really fast review. This is going to be general linear form. So this will be similar to linear form you would see in like linear algebra. But we only have two variables, so there's Co coefficient times x plus coefficient times y plus constant is zero. So this would be a linear equation in two variables. Now if we have a system, a linear system, First will be a1x plus b1y plus c1. The second equation, a2x plus <coughs> b2y plus c2 equals 0. So that would be a linear system. So let's talk about solutions. What types of solutions would you have, assuming x and y are real numbers? So it's a standard linear system you had going way back to pre-calculus 1 and probably your algebra class as well. What type of solutions could you have to a linear system? So we could have no solution. This would be your two lines didn't intersect. We could have one point. What's the third option? A line. You could have the entire line. It could be the exact same line. <coughs> and you would get the third outcome entire line if the two equations represent the same line basically if they're equivalent one of them is a multiple of the other equation so a solution can be a no solution yeah solution there is none basically if, if both of those equations create two different lines that are just parallel to each other yep you got two parallel lines where do they, where do they intersect they don't so there is no point in common to both lines so there is no solution Maybe it's not the best word of the best in English, but type of. Maybe I put none. I don't know if that'll make you happier. Well, now I understand what you mean, so it's okay. There we go. So none, one, or the entire line. So we're going to look at translation of axes. And the trans, uh, translation really means just shift. So we got two types of shifts, uh, vertical, horizontal. So we'll look at the origin and where is that going to go. So if we go over H and up K, we have a point that's of course HK. So who's taking linear algebra with a show of hands? All right. So what we're basically going to do here is change our basis. That's what we're going to be doing, basically changing <coughs> coordinates. Uh, we'll do it all. We'll work it all out so it's not, you don't need to have to have linear algebra. But I just wanted to relate to something else that you've seen before. <coughs> Now if you just have some other point over here, and this point would be x, y. So we got three points. Now I'm going to make a second coordinate system, and I'll go with the purple marker. And the notation I'm going to use for my second coordinates, I'm going to put a bar over the coordinates so that if the coordinates are just written with two numbers or two letters with no bar, that's the original coordinate system and if I write with bars over top that's our shifted coordinate system so I'm gonna call this point HK in the new coordinate system will be considered the origin so we're basically shifting things over H to the right and up K so I'm gonna call this the origin and now XY I could write it as X bar comma Y bar no I can't nope 
Wait. Yes. Where? Some kind of function of x, y creates x bar, y bar? Yeah, we're basically offsetting the origin by hk. So <coughs> this horizontal distance right here is x bar. That's just measuring this horizontal amount. And then y bar is going to represent the vertical amount right there. So I'll write down the equations to change coordinates now. Maybe that'll make it more clear. So h plus x bar equals x. And k plus y bar equals y. So that's how we're changing coordinates. And if you look, you add together, let's go with blue. If I go over H right here and then another X bar, that is X right there. So H plus X bar equals X in the coordinates that I wrote. So any questions about that idea? And then vertically, the same thing's happening. You're going to go f first up K. And then, oh, that's too far. So first go up k, and then go up y bar. And so your y is k plus y bar, which is written there on the right side. And now we're going to solve for x bar and y bar. So x bar is x minus h, and y bar is y minus k. Now we're going to consider a ODE, except the coefficient functions, last section coefficient functions were homogeneous. So what was in front of dx was a homogeneous function of order n, and what was in front of dy was homogeneous of order n. This time I'm going to put linear functions in front of dx and dy. So it's going to look like a1x plus b1y plus c1 dx plus, this is our second linear function a2x plus b2y plus c2 dy equals zero. So there's going to be some different cases. I could have two lines that uh, are parallel and the same, two lines that are parallel and not the same, or two lines that are not parallel and they intersect at one point. So we're going to go one case at a time. And the first one will do uh, not parallel. equations are not parallel. What does that mean about the system? It has one solution. So we should get one point as our solution. So if they're not parallel, they intersect in one point. Call the solution HK, I think. So we're going to let uh, HK be the solution. So if we look a little more carefully at not parallel, uh, what does that specifically mean about the lines? They cross at one point. So they cross at one point. Uh, let's think about slope. So 
So if they're not parallel, what can we say about slope? Which is not, I don't, didn't really write out slope explicitly yet. We're going to derive it. It's not hard to do. What can you say about the slopes? Different. They're going to be different. Uh, so, so also the non-parallel slopes are not equal. Their slopes are different. So let's compute the slope for the first line. How in the world do I figure out the slope? Take a derivative. <coughs> I could take derivative and solve for y prime. So that's, that's a calculus way to find it. How could I find it with algebra? Isn't it the one, uh, the slope formula that we Change it to any form that has the word slope in it. And then look at where slope should appear. So y equals mx plus b form is a standard one people think about. So I just basically solve for y, and the coefficient of x is the slope. The point intercept form to the y1 minus Whatever, as long as your form has a slope m in it, it'll work. So point slope, slope intercept, anything with any form of slope in it is going to work. All right, so just use algebra. Don't use calculus. Just use algebra and find this slope. We'll use calculus on the second one to find it in a completely different way. So find the slope. The mx plus b form is useful. We really just want to get the m. That's what we're going for. So what is our slope? Negative a1 over b1. So it be negative a1 over b1. Let's call this m1 because it's the slope of the line 1. So m1 is negative a1 over b1. What if b is 0? What type of slope would we have? So it would be undefined vertical slope. And it's OK to have vertical slopes now. So if you get undefined, that just means vertical slope. And undefined is not equal to any number. So any, as long as the other slope's not also undefined, they would not be parallel. So you're going to have a vertical line and a not vertical line. And those would be, have that unique solution. All right, so now I want you to find the slope of the A2, B2, C2 line. <coughs> and I want you to use calculus this time. So step one. Find ddx of this, and then solve for y prime. And hopefully we'll get the analogous slope out of here. So this might be an immature comment, but in Spanish, when you say analogous, analogous means but. Well, without the Anna in the front. No, with an analogous. Yeah. Oh, but you need to take out two letters, so yeah. it's a stretch. Yeah. Sounds kind of similar, analogous. So analogous. you put the na analogous in analogous? <laughs> 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 All right, get to work. slope, I want dy over dx. You could take d dy, but then you would have dx over dy, so your slope would be the reciprocal of that number. Which is totally, however you want to get dy dx is your, your choice. I want the standard way. Alright, so this is basically the exact same thing we got the first time around. 
except every, we got the two and the two. So you can get the slope either way, it doesn't matter. Uh, if you're finding the slope in general, you probably want to use calculus because if you have a quadratic, you, there's no single slope, you need a function that would represent the slope. So that single slope only works with linear function. All right, so we got our two slopes, uh, and we can also say uh, M1 is not M2. M1 not equal to M2, so I'm just going to write the two uh, versions. So we got negative A1 over B1 is not negative A2 over B2. Uh, let's multiply by negative 1. So if one side's undefined, that's totally fine. You just have vertical line. So in this case, undefined is okay. So this is basically the algebraic relationship you get from one solution right here. So we got that they intersect and that these two are not equal. Um, Now this is a side note. If C1 is 0 and C2 is also 0, what would you, your lines, I don't know why I keep writing B2. Your lines would actually be homogeneous functions if you had no constant. So one way to think about homogeneous, the x and the y coordinates appear with the same order. So in this case, they both have order 1. You can ease, I can easily show this homogeneous, just uh, let y equal ux, uh, which is u equals uh, y over x, and then you have a1x plus b1ux, which is a1x plus b1ux, I don't know why I didn't do that in one step, but this is x, a1 plus b1u, so that's homogeneous. So if your constant coefficients are zero in both, you could solve this in a homogeneous way. What you're going to find is there's a big overlap between the different types of uh, ODEs that I'm going to show you. So some linear ODEs, if your constants are zero, are also homogeneous. And then you can choose which way you want to solve them. Whatever way you find easier, or whatever one pops in your head first, basically. So most, a lot of ODEs can be solved in several ways you get to choose which way to solve them. A big part of this class is determining what type of ODE you get, and then is it homogeneous, is it linear, is it separable? Those are the three types you know about now. So you look at ODE, you have to know which of the three types it is, and then you choose you know, your choice of what type it is, determines how you're gonna solve it. The hard part of this class is when there's somewhere between eight and 12 different types of ODEs, you have to figure, you have to classify them. That's where it gets tricky. And that's why I grouped up your homework sections in big chunks. So for example, linear, homogeneous, separable are all grouped together. And a couple more as well. So you're gonna have to determine which, which of these problems are which type to solve them. And if you work too hard at the beginning, you will overuse like homogeneous and linear. And then we get to Bernoulli, which is I think the, one of the last ones in this section. That's the most useful, so you may have knocked out too many homework problems. If that's the case, that's probably a good thing. What I recommend you do is just go into your textbook and do some uh, Bernoulli questions from the Bernoulli section. That's so, all in section two, or the homework two? Um, I guess it's not by section, but the homework two. Bernoulli, it's 11 will be the Bernoulli. So each of these is basically a different type of ODE. Uh, and whereas 11 is kind of the most general and most useful. But all of these chunk is, that's one homework. This is one homework section, and the reason I made it one homework section is so you have to detect what's linear, what's exact, what's uh, separable, what's homogeneous, all that. So that's why I put them all together and then gave you that huge, you know, mass of problems. Because if I broke it down and I gave you one homework set for each type, you would not be thinking about, is this linear? It's linear because it's in the linear section. So that's why I grouped them all together. So if you end up solving a whole lot of the homework problems using just the first two or three types, 
you want to give yourself more problems to practice exact and Bernoulli, is what I'm saying. Uh, and there was a re like we had to do homo uh, separable before we did homogeneous because homogeneous turns into separable. So you're going to find that theme happening again and again that we turned this harder type into an easier type we did before and then solved it. So there's a lot of this kind of cascading like we turned A into B and then B into C and we knew how to solve C already. So there's a lot of that going on. All right, back to linear. So if C1 equals C2 equals zero, uh, the ODE is homogeneous. In which case you can solve it however you want. You can go homogeneous or you can go linear, whatever you're in the mood for. Or if you only remember one of them, then you're probably going to do it that way. We got a unique solution. If C1 equals C2 equals zero, that just means that the solutions cross each other at the origin. And is that kind of how homogeneous is? Or am I wrong? They would certainly, they would cross at the origin. The solution would be zero, zero. I think if you wait a minute, that'll probably, things will make a lot more sense, or you'll probably be able to get a little more intuition okay. out of this. Uh, so I'm gonna write down what it means for HK to be the unique solution. <coughs> so it's a solution to both of these equations, A1X plus B1Y plus C1 equals zero and A2X plus B2Y plus C2 equals zero. So what does it mean for HK to be the solution to this first equation? What new algebra equation can I write down? So if I plug in H for X plus K for Y, what does this equal? Yep, equals the other equation, specifically zero. So that's what it means to be a solution. If I plug in those for x and y, I get the uh, first equation solved for zero. And likewise, in the second equation, I get the exact same thing, a2h plus b2k plus c2 equals zero. So that's what it means to be a solution. It means when you plug it in for x and y, the equation's true, i.e. it's equal zero. So now we're going to use that weird shift that we saw before, way up here. We're going to use this shift right here. We're going to change variables, kind of like we did in homogeneous. In homogeneous, we took out uh, y and replaced it by ux, or we took out x and replaced it by uy. The difference here is we're going to sub out both x and y and replace it with some weird x bar stuff. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So I'm going to let x equal x bar plus h and y equal to y bar plus k. So what is dx going to equal? And remember h and k are constant. h is constant, so dh is zero. So good news is dx is dx bar. So there's not like a heavy price to pay for the dx. And same thing, dy is dy bar. So we're ready to substitute now. So our ODE which was a1x plus a2y plus, oh jeez, a1x plus b1y plus c1 dx plus <coughs> a2x plus b2y plus c2 dy equals zero. So that was our original. Now I'm going to plug in all the substitutions that we made. 
So x is going to be, and it's going to get ugly before it gets better. So we need a little extra room now. So we got a1 times x bar plus h. Make sure that you multiply x bar plus h, the whole thing, times a1. So you need parentheses in there. So that's x. Now replacing y by y bar plus k plus c1. dx is now dx bar plus, so do the same thing over in the second one for x, y, and dy. So sub out x, y, and dy. substitution questions. We're now going to exploit the identities or the two solutions that are written at the top. So what I'm going to do is basically distribute all this stuff right here and then combine it together so I get my A1H plus B1K plus C1 I'm writing this in a different order than you would get if you just distributed. And then I get a1 x bar plus b1 y bar dx bar. So any questions about that? I just expanded and grouped the stuff I wanted at the front. Why does all this cancel out? Nope. Yeah, because it equals zero. It's right at the top of the board. Add those three things together, you get zero. <laughs> all right, do the same thing for the second part right there. So for the A2, B2, C2 part. Distribute it. Cancel out the right stuff, and see what you got left. cancel out the same thing but with the A2, B2, C2 part. So that thing adds up to zero and we're left with a relatively easy differential equation. A1x bar plus B1y bar dx bar plus A2x bar plus B2y bar dy bar equals zero. What type of a differential equation is this? Wrong. There's only one, two other types. One other type that you know about. It's not, it is linear uh, still in different variables. What type of diff uh, ODE is it? What type of differential equation is this? There's only one other type aside from linear and separable. Homogeneous, very good. Ooh. So this is a homogeneous <laughs> differential equation. That was answer when all the others are used up. Yes, <laughs> cross of elimination. All right, so homogeneous, you know how to solve homogeneous. How do we solve a homogeneous equation? You knew your quiz was yesterday, so you wouldn't need to know how to solve homogeneous today? <laughs> Well, that's the thing. I realized that <laughs> the good amount of not is good. All right. So the way you solve it, 
you let u equal, now in this case it's a little weird, it's not x over y because our variables are x bar and y bar, so in this case it's u is x over y, x bar over y bar, or u equals y bar over x bar. In this particular case, it doesn't matter which of the two that you use. You can go either way because it's a symmetric uh, homogeneous equation. Either way will work. And then I'll just write dot 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 because you should know how to solve it after this. Or at least after the weekend you'll know how to solve homogeneous. So it's a good time for an example. We still have to go back and uh, take care of when they are parallel lines. So I'll give you an example where they're not parallel. So we can do exactly what I wrote on the board. So I did not explicitly write out how to solve. I did go through the steps, but I didn't really name them. So let's go back and write notes. I'll write notes in blue about the actual things we're doing. So I'm gonna go back to, let's see, case one, right here. I'm gonna go back to, yeah. I wrote case one down. Uh, it was right after I wrote, wrote consider that ODE. Oh. There you go. All right. So what I want you to pay attention to is this. Let H K be the solution to the system of equations. So we got to solve the system of the two homogeneous, the two linear coefficients equaling zero. So I need to find H K. So we need to find HK first. And then after that, ooh, somewhere down here, uh, we do have to make sure the slopes are not the same, so that they're not parallel. Now I gave you an example where I told you they weren't parallel, but you should double check before you just keep going. So find HK, check. Actually, if you find a single solution, you know they're not parallel. So if you find that there's one solution, they can't be parallel you would find no solution or the entire line. So if we can find HK, then they're not parallel. The next thing we did was some substitutions. All you really needed was this part right there. So you're going to get an X bar, you're going to create an X bar and a Y bar, and it's this right here. So that's step two right there. And step one was find HK. So that's where I wrote the instructions. So step one, find HK, and step two is that substitution right there. All right, we're gonna do step one first. Obviously, you need to know HK. So this is step one. Find HK, which is the solution of the system. What is my first equation? What's my first linear equation in this system? 2x minus y plus 1 equals 0. Yep, 2x minus y plus 1. You have to remember that it's supposed to equal 0. That's not written inside the problem. So don't forget that, and I'll write that in extra bold. Do not forget this equals 0 part. That's not written in the original ODE. And of course, your second equation, x plus y, and that also needs to equal zero. All right, solve these. Solve the system. They're not parallel. They're definitely not parallel. I can see from the slope already. So figure out hk. I think elimination is probably the easiest way to go, but you can go substitution if you really want to. Don't use a matrix. That's completely unnecessary.
All right, so any questions on negative one-third, positive one-third for HK? So that's our HK. HK equals negative one-third, comma, one-third. What I'm going to skip writing sometimes, you can absolutely write H equals negative one-third, comma, K equals one-third. You can write those down explicitly, but I'm just going to leave it written in that first form right there. So I'm just going to leave it written in point form, basically. You guys have all survived Calc 2, and I think almost all of you went through Calc 3, so we're going to write things like this. What I'm erasing is more of a calculus one way of writing equations. So what is step two? Yep, change variables. So do that right now. We'll write that down. X equals uh, X bar plus H. So this is step two. questions on this uh, substitution. I strongly recommend you write your original differential equation and then substitute it out instead of just kind of checking up and then writing and checking and writing trying to substitute in one shot. So I'm going to just rewrite the original and then make some substitutions. substitution questions now if you want people to think you're really clever you can basically cross out all your constants mm -hmm. but I'm going to just add them up to double check mm -hmm. in case I made a mistake so they should all cancel out. I should be left with, if we go back in time, oh no, somewhere. All right, we should not have any constant terms. If you just look what we had left, there's no constants. So all the constants should add up to zero. All I'm gonna do is ensure that that actually happened. So I should have an X bar term and a Y bar term, no constant terms. be pretty clear in this form that you add those constants to zero. So the only reason I did this was basically a checking. Just to make sure I didn't make some stupid linear algebra mistake off a system of two equations, two unknowns. But you never know. Flip a negative sign or write something down wrong and you won't get the right answer. So we got 2x bar minus y bar d 
x bar plus x bar plus y bar dy bar equals zero. Now you're going to solve a homogeneous. There should be a very easy homogeneous equation to solve. And I'm going to go ahead and make the choice for you. Let's do x bar over y bar. So let u equal x bar over y bar. And that means u y bar equals x bar. So we're going to take out x bar and replace it by u y bar. You also have to compute the derivative of this because the derivative of, not operators, the derivative variable part has to be changed out too. So d x bar and dy, uh, one of them stays the same. So the three things I have circled are all being substituted out. So our dx, basically anything that has x bar in it is going out. So the y bar can stay there, but everything with the with the x bar needs to leave. So go ahead and sub all those out now. And then you have to recombine it so you have separable. So I can cancel out a u bar overall. Oof, u bar, geez, y bar overall. There's a y bar here. I'll switch to purple. We got a y bar. That didn't work. So we got a y bar. I'm going to take that two down to a one, and then that y bar is going to be gone. So we're factoring a y bar out, dividing by that, just like we did with homogeneous. And let's go ahead and combine our y, uh, dy bar coefficients. So I get this plus 2u plus 1. this up we have a u 2u squared minus u plus u plus 1 which is 2u squared plus 1 
and this should be separable at this point so we're going to just move all the Y bars and U bars where they should be this should be a familiar form remember the depending on which homogeneous substitution you make you should have a one over whatever your very uh, one of your variables is so one of them should be an ln if you don't get one of these as an ln something went wrong so one of them should be a really simple antiderivative the other one is almost always not simple but sometimes usually not too bad hopefully i've picked good problems for you <laughs>